Hello everyone, I'm Alex from Ethereum and I want to try, I want to talk about how do we do universal logins on a multi device world because everyone has more than one device. So here are main problems that we have about your users, right? They don't care about Ether, they don't want to be about buying Ether, they don't want to think about Ether, they don't care about backing up private keys, we can tell them it's important, they want. They don't want to understand, like they don't want to see a seed phrase, the first thing they open an app, they don't even know if they, they want to use the app, you're, we're already asking them to back up a seed phrase. They don't understand, and sometimes when you, you tell them you want to like, be secure, and they say, okay, can I use Google Authenticator? And then, no, 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 you can't use Google Authenticator. Actually, there, there's like, that, that's a common scam in my crypto, where, like in my your wallet, was that the, you would go to, a, like, go to a site that would tell you, here's how to set up my second factor authentication on my crypto, and that would be a scam, right? If you see second factor authentication, it's probably a, a scam. They don't want to see huge high streams. They just want to have like a username that like they have in Twitter and Facebook everywhere. They don't understand wh why can't I just buy it on credit card? Why why is it so hard? I can buy like I, I can buy little shit tokens on my app, right? But not real like tokens. Why, why can I buy like stars on my Steam game, but I can't just buy like using the App Store credit? But like, why can't I buy your your crypto this way? And they would rather not download anything if, if you ask them. Okay, they would rather not download anything. I mean, they like downloading things on mobile, they don't like downloading things on the desktop. And more important than that, everyone has multiple devices. You have like, you are, you, you have an account on Twitter, then you log into desktop, that's your same identity, that's your same account, you wanna be, be able to get your Twitter on, on Android, you don't want to create a new account on, on Twitter for, for Android, that doesn't make sense. So here's a bad solution. Have a new account with Ether on every new device, right? That's a bad solution because suddenly you have to, for every time you download a new app, you have to fund the app. Or if you already have, if you want to be great between apps, you have to pay a transaction fee. And, and if you lose that device, you lose that Ether. And if you forget that device, you lose that ether. That's a bad solution. Like a worse solution, a really bad solution can be, yeah, let's create a centralized login system that connects you to an account and we keep your credit for you. That's bad. That's how we did it on the old web. That's not what you want. Now, a really, really, really bad solution is let's type our private key to log in, right? I think my, the guys at my crypto have already said that. Let's stop doing that. And I would even go further. If you have a backup seed phrase and you want your users just to back up their new one, it's almost the same as, as typing a new crypto, a, a private key. Because, okay, like first time you see a, a seed phrase, you're gonna back up. Second time, you might back it up. Like by the third time, you're just gonna take in like the seed phrase you already have from MetaMask and typing in your app. And that's even, a, even worse because a seed phrase can be the private key to multiple accounts, right? So let's not do this, right? Let's, let's not train to the users to give away their keys. I think that's simple, that's sort of obvious, but I think everyone is, 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 is like, w that's how we are doing right, to, right, right now. And there's like a paradox in crypto, right? Whenever you, you have a private key, we tell them two things. First of all, this key is very important. You should back it up. You should have a bunch of copies on it. You cannot lose it. But also, if you so, sort of make too many copies of them and if you, you put in a USB stick and someone, like you, you use that USB stick to your friend, then you might lose it too because you, you cannot make too many copies of it, right? So make as many copies as you can, but not that many that you might lose it. And that's, that's a weird paradox to have like in, in crypto land, but that's, that's what the story we tell to our users. So here's the solution that I want to try to present today, right? And I'm gonna go through it and then I'm gonna go like on, on, each, uh, on each point slowly. Let's have context specific iterless accounts. Let's use them to do signed messages instead of transactions. Then we can do a gas relay abstraction on an identity. I'm gonna go on, on that. And we use identity contracts and that's where you keep your funds, your ether and everything like that. 
And for that identity, have a ENS username that people can easily identify. And let's do it as standard across multiple wa wallets so that you can use your identity that you created in one into the other. And, they, and by sharing it, you are increasing security, not decreasing. What exactly do I mean, right? First of all, context-specific iterless accounts. What I mean is, let's stop backing up private keys. I, I, I'm serious. Like, make a private key on a device per application and do not take that private key of, of, that, of, of that app ever. Just keep it on that device. That private key belongs to that device and to that application. If you lose that private key, that's, that's OK. You have others, right? That's, that's the whole point. That's why we don't put any funds on those keys. We don't put any ether on those keys, right? Well, so you have like one private key on your, on your mobile phone. Maybe you have multiple if you have multiple accounts. And if you have it on a, on a browser, maybe one of the things you can do, keep the, here's a crazy thought, keep the private key unlocked on your local storage on the browser, which sounds crazy if that private key has value. But if you think about it, that's a good place to, if, if, if you don't mind losing the private key, and that's, that might actually be a very good place to keep it. And what do we do that? We use those private keys to sign messages of intent saying, I want to do this. I want to transfer tokens. I want to transfer Ether to someone else. We use an identity contract. That identity contract is an ERC-725 contract, but it also is, supports those signed, so those signed messages. It can read those signed messages and obey what, it, what, it, what it's telling. And since we are doing this, since you already have an identity contract, also create for your users a subdomain. You, so, so whenever you're onboarding the users, create for them uh, an identity contract and then attach to it a ENS username that will make it easier for them to identify themselves because they don't need to think about their, their address just with, the, with their name. And then here's an interesting trick, right? Because suddenly your identity has ether, your identity has tokens. It means that whenever you sign the message, you can program your identity to pay back the ether that it costs to, to deploy that message to the person deploying, right? So I sign a message, I give it to her. She then deploys it to my contract. She's spending ether in order to execute like my crypto kitty transaction. Why would she do this? Because she knows that when she does that, my contract is gonna pay her back. And it doesn't need to be in Ether. That's an interesting part. My contract has tokens. I can set my contract, and I can do that on the, sign, on the message signing, saying I'm going to pay your transaction in DAI, in status tokens, or in whatever. That means you can have a, 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 a situation where your user doesn't need, even need to have Ether to do the transactions. They can, be, they, they can do crypto kitty. They can be buying a crypto kitty using DAI to pay for gas, which already opens a lot of interesting possibilities. And how, how can you do it? So 725 identity ha already has, so you need to have, uh, you have the access control on those keys. Because what we're doing now is that we are treating Ethereum keys, not our keys to your funds, but as, as authorization tokens. They are just things that have, have the ability to sign messages and, and ask, ask permission to do things. And I think we can do, we, we can have a lot more authorization levels, but 725 already gives a basic authorization where you have, some keys have a management potential where, they, so some keys have action potential where they, they, they can execute any, any, they can execute any function as long as it's not, in itself, in other, in other contracts. It can be a management contract. Uh, if the key has management privileges, it can execute actions on itself. And if it doesn't have any of it, it's called an encryption key, and it cannot execute any actions, but you can still use it to identify them with your app, or maybe just sign messages, chat, or, or, or sign stuff. And that where having a private key on your browser becomes an interesting thing because suddenly if you are running, uh, let's say, a chess app, what you can have is that you keep like the, that particular 
chef key unlocked on the local storage, and that can be used to sign moves and to, to do, like, to, to sign your chess moves. And when you want to actually, like, create a new game where you put one eater to, on the board, then you might require an, another authorization from an action or management key. But during all the, all the moves on your game, you don't need to go through MetaMask. You don't need to, to have to require some, some, some external signer to sign it. You can just internally on your app, as soon as you, you say you want to do a move, you can sign that message and send it to, you, to the network. And the interesting thing is that if you, if you start thinking about this, every time you add a new wallet on your same identity, it becomes a second factor. But, so, but in the beginning, when you just have a single key, how can we prevent the users from losing that key? Since it's a contract, we can be creative on, on doing things like that. Uh, one of the things, one of the things a few, a few projects are doing, and Status is one of them, is that you can have a friend, friend recovery system where you can set a few, few trusted contracts that, and that's like secret friends that are allowed to create, recover your keys if you lose one. Or you can even have like a central recovery in the beginning. Let's say that in the beginning you have, you simply allow your app to verify your, the email or the identity to the person and then to create a new, uh, a, a new key for them. And of course, since you, be, you, you, you control that contract, at some point you can disable that. At some point you can, you can decide, look, I think I'm safe enough. I can, I can take off the, like, the training wheels. I don't need like, that app to recover it for me. Or you can even do something with like a dead man switch where you can say, look, if no transaction happened on this contract for a period of time, then allow like a, a special key that I have or a special ID that I have to recover that key, right? Maybe, maybe my, my wife can recover my key if I disappear for like six months. That's, that's just things we can do. Okay, let's do it again, but with pictures, because I think it's nice to have pictures, <laughs> right? So let's say you create an awesome app on, the, on mobile, right? And now you want to, them to log in and sign up. What you want them, like the first thing you think you do is you just ask them for a username, right? And they, they, they'll type, I'm Bob. And here's a nice thing, bob.awesomeapp does not exist. So they already know it's a sign up, it's not a login. So you don't necessarily need to have like, ask if they want to like, log in, sign up. You can ask which, which identity they have and then you, you say, oh, okay, Bob doesn't exist, so I want to sign up. You click sign up, the app signs you up, right? It sounds simple, but what the app is doing is a lot of things. What the app is doing, the app created a private key and uh, that, that is on, on the phone. Then they have created a, a deployed a new contract and register an ENS name, bob.awesomeapp.if, to that contract and then uh, and, and took that public key that is on that phone and made it as one of the action or management keys on that contract. All of that is happening behind the scenes. I mean, there are multiple ways we, we, can, uh, we can simplify that, but that's how. The user doesn't need to approve all those transactions. The user doesn't need to see anything. All they know is that I've set up a new account for you. 